Welcome to another Real Estate Talk Show, featuring highlights of the best interviews from our national real estate radio show. Here's another property expert. When you buy a home, there's always an assortment of little things that you've got to repair, alter or replace. It can be frustrating, time-consuming and maybe even quite costly. My good friend Nick Newton joins me. Hello, Nick. G'day, Kev. How are you, guys? Fantastic, mate. I want to get some advice from you about how do, I, how do you identify these little pesky problems before you move in? Uh, the only way really is to, to look for them. Uh, look, the building inspections uh, will carry out. They will carry out an inspection, general inspection. They will normally open every single window and uh, every door, and and normally you will find out sticking doors and sticking windows. And one of the biggest problems, especially with old Queenslanders, is the missing uh, window furniture. You know, the, the little catches. Yep. Throughout a house, and that can be really extreme. If you've got some of those old Queenslanders where the van has been closed, you can have 30 or 40 yeah. casements, you know. But one of, there's an advertiser we've got on the show uh, called Fox Plumbing. They, they actually do plumbing inspections, uh, similar to what, you know, building and pest inspections. And, and this seems to be a growing need to, because plumbing can be one of those things that can cost you a lot of money after you move in. Oh, sure, it can, especially uh, on the older homes, Kev, where you can find that there's a uh, the old sewer pipes and the old galvanised pipes through the house. Yep. Uh, and at the first glance, and when you walk through the house, you won't even notice anything. They look great. You know, and things will work. Uh, two or three weeks after you move in, you, you find out your showers are, are clogging up and rust is coming through. Uh, all these sorts of things are um, yeah, really important to check on uh, First occasion, really. Yeah, so we've covered the building and pest, and we've now covered the the plumbing. And um, you know, I think that's a great idea to have a plumbing inspection. Like that. But what about the electrics? Oh, look, that's one of the real critical um, points. Usually, the building inspector, if it's a relatively new house and it's got a, a safety switch on it, then uh, that's usually a good sign that uh, an electrician has been in there. He's put a safety switch in, and if everything is um, okay in the house, the safety switch is going to work. If it mm-hmm. doesn't, then there's a problem. But in the older homes, um, a building inspector, for instance, isn't very really qualified to um, uh, check things. So anything over about 30, 40 years, I'd be, I'd be recommending get a separate uh, electrical inspection done. Yeah, especially if you have a look around and see that, uh, what's it called, the black snake wiring, that old well, black stuff? Well, look, if it's, a, if it's a, just a post-war black wiring, which is the rubber insulator, it's highly dangerous. Hmm. It was made, in actual fact, just to give a little bit of quick history, it was made from old rubber tyres and stuff, abandoned in New Guinea and northern uh, Australia and uh, from all the old vehicles that have been abandoned and uh, it's very, very brittle and uh, you can actually just get your thumbnail under it and peel it right back to bare wire mm. if you're silly enough. Yeah. Uh, another little trick that to, to watch out for running toilets. Some people I have known to actually turn off the tap to the toilet so it doesn't run during an inspection. So. Yeah, well, that's, a, that's an old trick. There's a lot of things. <laughs> Look, I got caught one on one inspection where they had... Uh, an electrician and who'd uh, pulled turned the, the hot water system off, and the whole time I was there, he, he was fidgeting around with it. Well, it turned out he was a, the son in law, and uh, when they tested their shower to use their shower the hot, and turn the hot water on, it actually ran down through the through underneath the floor, underneath the house. So they had done that on purpose. Yeah, there's all Goodness. lots of little tricks people use. Yeah, I suppose you get used to looking for those too. Um, a lot of people do do it yourself. Things that th- these are things you got to look out for, especially if it's electrical or tiling. Nick, is uh, you'd have picked that up in your building inspection days. Well, most of you do. Yeah, look, with tiles. Generally, if there's a whole, you know, big expanse of floor tiles, you might tap a few here and tap a few there. If they're uh, obviously drummy or they're out of line, but look, surprisingly enough, Kev, uh, we often find that uh, when people do their do their own stuff or do DIY. They can often be better than uh, the tradesmen because they, they spend a lot more time doing it and, uh, and uh, put a lot more care into it because it's their own little job. Mm. As always, Nick, a pleasure talking to you, mate. I had some great words of advice there. Nick Newton's the man. Give him a call if you like, 0412 711 487. Nick, thanks for your time, mate. No worries at all, Kev. For BC, we're talking real estate.